Welcome back to the XDS Custom Shop here in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, this is a big boy. That's what I said when I came in here today, Eric. It's wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh. I'm here with Eric. Say hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> back to business. I said that this was a big boy when I came in here, Eric. It's a large board. Yeah. With many things. On and there's, it's got secrets because you can see things poking out there, but they're obfuscated, <clears throat> obscured, occluded, if yeah. you will. By no, a tear on the top. I thought about making this thing jog over like this. He did. Uh, he thought, well, that's a waste of time and money. Yeah. So awesome. It would have been awesome. But uh, this is straightforward, and you don't have a you know you don't have a bunch of blackout here to account for. True. Um, also, at least this one needs to be turned on every day, and this one. Oh, too. okay. Well, that'll help. So this is for Mike Schweitzer of Mercy Me, Indeed. and did well, I, you used to tech for him? I guitar tech for him for one tour, the Rockin' Did it go rockin well? Rockin' Worship Road Tour. Yeah, it might have been the first time they did it, but it was, it way out, out it exceeded their expectations at the time. You did, or the, the show did? The attendance numbers. Yeah, you, how numbers. do you feel that you did personally? I thought it was pretty fair. Where was this in your career? Is this before Reliant K or after Reliant after, K before white plain white tees? This was after I'd been with Little Big Town for a few years. Okay. And then I went and did this tour with them. That was cool. Any notes on Mike? Was he a cruel taskmaster or a gentle soul? He was he was what was a good dude. I assume still is a good dude. Uh, great player, had very good sounding stuff, had the loudest amp of anyone I've ever teched for. What was it? It was, uh, well, it was an AC30 or AC50 head type of thing. Oh, wow. But he had it run all the way up, so I had to put it inside of the B3 road case under the stage. I was also taking care of the keyboard player at the time. So we had a, he had a full B3, so we'd uncase that thing every day, and then the lid, you know, was as big as a B3. So I'd put Mike's cabinet in there, put the lid on it, and there was a little door in the back. I'd open up and put the speaker cable in. Nice. <laughs> was super loud <clears throat> but it sounded very good well now he's there's some more goodies that he may have retired that by now who knows but uh yeah. the way the world is though. going but there's more than enough s stuff here for things to get loud so why don't you walk us through it yeah well, some of this stuff was on the last board that we kind of redid yeah it's more of a tidy job tidied right it up yeah kind of redid some cabling and stuff so an interface that we'd made for him a number of years ago now. That was under a PT that frame. Was, yeah, he w was on a big PT frame. <clears throat> uh, so same interface in here, goes to an AB box that is just a turnaround for an acoustic out. Uh, so I think for acoustic, they just set a DI out here or something. Uh, so that's, he's in control of that. And then he goes into a compressor, which I think is on all the time. One of these new ones here. Ooh, mm -hmm. The new little UA ones. And it sounds nice. Mm -hmm. uh, before, I think he had one of those orange comps. One of those JHS orange mm, comps. It's a very different the thing. The last time I had seen the other board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then out of there, and then it's into Musicom Lab, which he's had for a while. Mm -hmm. Mark V. <clears throat> and these are cool. And I've got all the, loop, the, the loops labeled here with what's in them. A uh, couple... <laughs> He kept apologizing for having two drops, but they have enough songs that are down either a half or a whole step that it makes sense for him because he got bit. Uh, I think he said, I've been I've been fooled too many times by not having that quite on the right one. Yeah. <clears throat> so Which this I way, get. no messing around. Yep. Uh, and, and an interesting point, some people like to have these uh, after a volume pedal, but some people like to have them before. That way you can see what you're tuning oh yeah which i think is i've never used one of these much live so i don't really know so what would you do that would trick you on this there in front so you're going to always see i think it's probably smart to see what it what it actually the sound is. you're making or what the instrument yeah, is doing what it's what people will hear yes what people will so hear if that thing's on and you and it says e flat you're see an e flat Hopefully you will be of sound mind not to think, oh crap, and try I'm, to... Yeah, and start wrenching it all up. 
Yeah. So a couple of those, and then there is an octave pedal here. Poly blue. And then this Mel 9, which are very cool sounding, mm -hmm. like those things. And then the Scruzz, or a Scruzz pedal. Those sound really said, good. Did you like it? Yeah. I think those cool. are cool. They had, well, I still are around. They have interesting pedals, I think. Uh, but they, I don't know that they, well, they still make these, don't they? The, the, the never off ones. Yeah. I think that's what they call them. I think they're called always on. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> but it's a cool idea. And if you've got a, uh, a looper like this, there's really yeah. no. Yeah. It's, to... Yeah. Why waste your time for a switch you don't I mean, need? It's so little. Yep. So that's pretty cool. And then drives. And they're just labeled D1 through 3, 1, 2, 3. And they're also on Velcro, all of these. So they so can, they can change. Be swapped. Mm -hmm. And then there's an insert box, which was also on the old board. And there's a DC run up here to it. So whatever we can add out here, mm -hmm. whatever he wants. And then there's an M1 modulation fellow up there. What's our verdict on those? I don't think I've really paid much attention to I it personally. I think they're cool. Cool. It does. <coughs> uh, Excuse me. I feel like I don't like many of the trims or the rotaries in here. Oh, really? Mike commented that he wants this for trims because he doesn't like the trims in here. Hmm, there you go. And uh, I think that's fairly commonly held view. I mean, they're they're fine and they work, but they don't sound like a Princeton Reverb, which is what I want all trim loaded. There you go. For myself. I got it. But that's cool. And then, so that's everybody in here. Mm -hmm. And then there's a Tone X. Which, that's the first one we've seen here. Yeah, I think that is the first one we put on a board. And I think it sounds good. Yeah, you I said you liked it. it. with the uh, headphones, and it sounds... Mike called it a, uh, a, a Kemper replacement. Yeah. Uh, now Kemper's got their little thing. Maybe the Kemper little thing will be a Tonex replacement. Yeah, who knows? Wheels on the bus go round and round. You know round. who uh, is the winner in that battle? Us, the consumer. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> so they can. They have, I'm happy that they'll keep fighting it. Out. That is true and trite. And how? So Tone X, HX here, and more stereo at this point coming mm -hmm. out of here. And this, then a hologram. Mm -hmm. But it's really it's, here. Oh, it's really here. The joke. I was going to say something, but I was like, that's too stupid. And then you started saying the stupid thing. And I was, I was like, I can't let him say the stupid thing first. A beautiful sounding pedal. They just do, I don't know how they work or what, I don't know how to make a, I don't know how to do anything on purpose with it. But they, <laughs> but they sound beautiful. Uh, oh, I should also mention there's a split point in here where the volume pedal and the mood are at. And it is like outside of loops. Yeah, outside okay. loops. So they're always live. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike said he likes to use this to grab little samples of whatever he's playing and do stuff. Another pedal that is pretty, but I don't know how to do anything on purpose with it. Mm -hmm. It's all happy. Sometimes when I watch you press the buttons, I think, oh, he's got it. And then you, and then you. Sometimes I think I Then you say something out. that indicates that you don't. Yeah. Oh, it sounds great. If you hit this, it makes it do this thing. And then you hit it and it does a whole other thing. And, uh, we'll get there one day. I mean. I'm not too worried about it. Comment below. <laughs> uh, out of here, Nemesis delay, which always mm -hmm. sounds good. And mm -hmm. then to a canvas up here. Out. Uh, throughs of that go to back to the interface here to go out. And then you can take the, uh, the DIs out if the Tonex is getting used. So then you got a whole direct board. Mm -hmm. If you don't have uh, the back line you're hoping for. Yep. And you got a conduit. <laughs> Conduit there. For MIDI stuff. Since we got so many, we're splitting out to so many different MIDI devices. Yeah, running through all that's not exactly advised. It's kind of a crapshoot. It it might work and you'd be fine, but... Uh, it might not work and then you're not fine. It's t Yeah, who cares if it doesn't work when you're at home or maybe playing on Broadway, but if you're on a... They say the neon lights are bright. If you're on a big stage, uh, it's pretty unfortunate. Yeah. And you have some very well-known well songs. With cues, yeah. With cues and stuff, yeah. That people want to know. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Zoomas and Ojais for power under mm -hmm. here. A lot of, a lot of power. A lot of power. things on this board. For sure. And a little crux for the HX. Yep. Uh, 
You can power these off of about three ports of these if you want. Yes. It takes three to reliably come up. Yes. Uh, but then that takes up a lot of space. So we could have either added another Ojai for 170 or 150, or we could add a Crux for 70, 70 bucks. So. Yeah. It seems like the right play. Yeah. But well, this is cool. This is a very cool board. So I it guess is. certainly the the Vox is going away if the Tonex is here. I wasn't thinking when I well, I talked think the before. Tonex is there for as just a backup. In case okay. Type of a thing, or maybe a travel stuff. Cool. They do they do travel with it. Yep. Uh, all the USB things because that's a thing now. Mm -hmm. We have to be aware of. Thankfully, this doesn't have any USB. But <laughs> this one you can get to. This one you can get to. Although you don't really need to. The one for this is a little dongle that we added there to get to. <gasps> it's hiding. And then the there he is. Uh, the tone X you can get, yeah. Get, get able. Yeah, and a board we made here. We made the risers. Yep. All that good stuff. Kind of nice to be able to make them here. You can size things appropriately. Mm -hmm. Uber custom. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a little spendier, but it's bespoke. <clears throat> that's, that's the way it is with bespoke things. Yeah. And it was made this way to fit a case that he already had. Yes. Uh, it did have a pedal train. There was a divider here. So I had to do just a little bit of refoaming to make this thing fit. And the riser, the height also had to be very specific. Yes. To fit in this relatively shallow case. Uh, but so fit, it does. So these are on Velcro because they're swappable and because there's not enough room. <laughs> For, for this one to be high, on the uh -huh. and especially this other one that he may or may not swipe out. Uh, actually, I have to take this off and put Velcro on <laughs> just so it'll this make. Will kiss the knobs if you step on something on top. Yeah, no kissing. Uh, but shouldn't have to touch any buttons up there. Yeah. But very cool board. Yep, good board, good work, Eric. As usual, look how pretty this is, folks. It's pretty handsome. There's a lot of cable. There's yeah. a lot. Cable. I can't wait to see the, the footage on this one. The foot that's there's, not as in filmage, but as in a number feet of, of, uh, of this cable on it, of the audio cable. Joined 45 feet? Like you like you pulled? I pulled 45 feet of of the split of, of the 25 28. Double. Yeah. Yeah, so, I like so that's 90 feet total. Line. No. Oh, yeah, nine, there's, yeah, there's. 90 total feet of cable. In yeah, that's a that's a good bit. With all the send and returns, and it got, has to go up and over here. Yeah, and I, there was kind of a bit of up and down on this one. Just a little bit, but... Well, cool. Pretty cool. Well, thanks, Eric, and thanks, Mike, and thank you guys for watching. If you need anything else... Oh, oh wait, you have something? <clears throat> Anecdotal story. On that tour, there was, I want to say six bands maybe mm -hmm. <clears throat> smurfs me was headliner the opening band uh swapped a little bit throughout the tour and at one point it was what do you mean swapped uh different bands were the opener okay opener. gotcha gotcha and when i say opener i mean they started playing when House lights are up still <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i think they played maybe three three or four songs so one show the openers uh the singer was pregnant she went into labor and they needed a band to open it so me and some of the other crew guys put a band together yes called tba <laughs> <laughs> and we played uh, two cold play songs and a hymn and that was it <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome and i played mike's rig and he uh teched for me awesome that well that's a great story <laughs> and a good way to and a good way to end the video yeah that's killer dude that was a good time. all right folks Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.